Shalom. Prophesying to the wheel reloaded will be with you live on AM 1370 WLTH Radio every other Sunday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you there. Shalom, shalom. You have called hey, me on. Shalom, shalom. Uh, family, leadership, most high in Christ, blessed is Officer Abishai. Hey, most high in Christ, blessed, Officer. Hey, most high in Christ, going? blessed, Officer. Shalom. Hey, man, y'all are in Gary, Indiana. This is big for me, man. All really praise. Big. All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high. Lord's will, we can hey, have you on here one day. Hey, I'll be down. I'll be down. Y'all can put me in. Uh, y'all forgive me. I'm a little under the weather, but. Uh, just listening to y'all go through Deuteronomy 28 and being a, a person born and raised in Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana is the oppression of God. If you don't see God's oppression, just go live in Gary, Indiana for a year. And you'll know exactly what Deuteronomy 28 is talking about. Um, from the corruptness all the way up and down to no businesses, to the death that happens within the city, to the no jobs, to the broken families. Deut Deuteronomy 28 is prevalent. Um, the reason I was calling in because there's one aspect of Deuteronomy 28 I was hoping you all touched on when it comes to Gary. If you ride through Gary, uh, you see churches on every corner. And it's amazing how um, the religious institutions that are in Gary are not benefiting the city at all. And you read that in Deuteronomy 28 in the 64th chapter. Well, the churches is the black businesses in Gary. Everything else is run by other nations except the churches. So this, Gary is a product of not only the, the curses of God on a daily basis, but also the people that's supposed to be teaching the people in Gary the truth about why we have to live in such conditions. They're all lying to the people. So it's a combination of Christianity has a big stronghold, uh, big churches like Embassies of Christ, and it's a mega church. You ride through Gary, everything in Gary, you raggedy. Until you pull up on that church, <laughs> you pull up on that church, you think you in downtown Houston or something for five seconds. That's the poverty in Gary, Indiana. These religious institutions have to be made known that they are liars. So it's very important that this radio show happen and that the people tune in and learn their true history and the truth about the Bible. All praise. Thank you for calling in. So just so just since he, he since he mentioned mentioned it, we're gonna go to that scripture that he that he mentioned just so we can see in the Bible what he just referred to. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So just to just to refresh it, what we're reading is Deuteronomy 28. These are the curses that came on the Israelites, which as we've been, as we identified, these curses happened to the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It says you're gonna be, we're gonna be scattered among all people from one end of the earth to the other. So everywhere you go, the Israelites are there. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are there. Read. And there thou shalt serve other gods. And when we in those other nations, we're gonna serve other gods. What gods are we gonna serve? Read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, uh -huh. even wood, and even wood and what's stone. Wood, what's that wood? When you go, when you pass many a church, what they got on the front of the church? Wooden a cross. real big wooden cross, a huge wooden cross. Some of them even have their wooden cross, and they they bring it down while you inside the sanctuary. They bring that big wooden cross down on the uh, stream, and everybody looking up to it and what they doing. You're worshiping that cross. That's what you're doing. You're worshiping that cross. A lot of our people are blinded because we think we're serving God, but no, no, you're not. You're serving another God. Read. And stone. And stone. That stone is talking about the uh, the nation of Islam. or, uh, or, the, or the, the, It's talking about the Kaaba stone, which we see is with the nation of Islam, the Muslim um, religion. Those are the two major, and then think about it, those are the two major religions when you look at the statistics. We were cursed to serve other gods, and that's Christianity and Islam. 
So now we're going to, you want to add something? Yeah, I want to add something um, because I brought up an interesting point with us uh, being in Christianity and having to serve those other gods. And with those other gods, it came a mindset where um, now we are indoctrinated in their thinking. Give me, um, give me the book of Job. Oh, we got a phone call. Let's get that call. Call of your lie. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. That would happen to many of us. Yeah, I did not know at all. And it's everywhere. So I really was looking really was lost on that. But I thank God I'm not now. All praise. All praise. And that's our goal. Our goal is to get this word out so all of us, so more of our people recognize that. Yeah, whatever I can do to him, I'm trying to do my best. All praise. Y'all keep doing, you're doing a great job. Just keep doing. Don't all right. Word All right, all right. Shalom. Thank you for your call. Most High Christ, Most Christ bless. Most High Christ bless. And and, and that's exactly what we're well, uh, attempting to do, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring the scriptures that relate to us, and we're going to show you exactly what happened to us through the Bible and the solutions that come with it. So with us being uh, scattered across the four corners of the globe and being indoctrinated in certain religions, we took on that mindset. And let me uh, get uh, Job chapter 30, start at verse nine. Job chapter 30, verse nine. This is the book of Job chapter 30, verse nine. And now I am their song, yea, I am their byword. Because now what? When you look into the Christian church, most of, the ch most, most of what we do in the Christian church is what, singing songs. We sing in their gospel songs, and then also when you look at it, it's the music industry at the same time. So now we are singing a song. We are just a song to them. And what else are we? Read that at the bottom part. I am their byword. I am their byword because now they come up with all these different bywords for us. Because even when you ask our people, when we go out in the streets and we ask our people, what is their nationality? The first thing they'll say is, I'm Baptist. But that's not a nationality. That is a religion. But that just lets you know that these scriptures and these curses are real because we became a song and we became a byword unto them. Read verse 10. Verse 10. They abhor me. They flee far from me. They abhor me. They flee far from me because the other nations, the, the ones, the oppressors who put us in these conditions based off our disobedience for keeping God's uh, household rules, they abhor us and they flee far from us. What does that mean that they flee far from us? Well, like we're in Gary, Indiana right now. And the desolation that's here in Indiana is showing that, look, the poverty is, is we are poverty stricken. There's more churches, but the schools are, are downtrodden. There's no businesses. The, the educational system is like, it sucks. No one has hope here. So that is them fleeing far from us. The businesses that shipped out, they gone. When Michael, when Michael Jackson, when they was growing up in Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana was, was the cream of the crop at that time. But what happened? The curses had to happen. And so right now we are greatly abhorred and they have fleed far from us. What's the bottom part of that? And spare not to spit in my face. And, and when we was going through uh, the civil rights movement, what was happening? They were sicking dogs on us. They had signs saying, hey, look, you can't drink here. You can't eat here. And a lot of times we got spit in our face. So these, these curses fit us perfectly. We just have to identify back with it, and then we have to return back to our Father. Give me Hosea chapter 3, verse 4. So we have to turn back. We have to know exactly who we are, and we have to keep, uh, once we know who we are, then we'll realize, like, hey, you know what? The God, our Father, he set household rules for us to get us out of these conditions so that we can lift ourselves up. Read that. Hosea chapter 3, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king mm -hmm. and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image. See, we, we suffer many days without a king, a prince, and an image. What does that mean? Our leadership. The image of us knowing that we are great. Because when you look at Gary, Indiana, 
a lot of the youth, they don't know that we're great. We done travel in a lot of poverty stricken areas in Illinois, and a lot of our people, they don't know that they are great. Give me a uh, drop what you got in Hosea. Go to Lamentations chapter five. Because we 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 are the we are in the hand of our oppressors, so therefore they do own us. And not only do they own us, they own the resources that that they um took from us as well. And the Bible talks about that as well. Read that. Chapter uh chapter five, start at verse three. Lamentations chapter five, verse three. Mm -hmm. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Because we wasn't, we was, even when we were in, um, even when we were chattel slaves, we still had a family unit. But what had happened to us, even, even when we got off the slave ships, we were sold to what? Our enemies. We were sold to the ones who oppressed us. And we became fatherless. We became orphans. And even up to today. Even through the various um, the economical oppression that we have, through the, through the societal uh, oppression that we have, we become fatherless, we become orphans. And what? And now our mothers are widows because the fathers are dying at an alarm rate, black on black crime. We are getting murdered by the, by the oppressor and we getting systematically murdered by the foods, poor educational system where we make poor decisions. So it's like a, it's like a circle of affliction that we go through. Read uh, verse 4. Verse 4. We have drunk in our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. See, we even, and this goes back to the curse where in Deuteronomy 28, 48, we got to depend on our enemies for water. Our own water, our own resources is sold to us. Even the wood, even the things that, even the things that come from this earth are being sold to us, which belongs to us. Why? Because the earth was given to us as an inheritance. But because of our disobedience, we have to repent. Until that happens, we're going to continuously be in these afflicted, afflictive, oppressive mindset by our oppressors. So the message is like, hey, we are the Israelites. God gave us rules that we have to abide by. And in order for us to turn the, turn the tide of this oppression, we have to repent and go back to our father. Go ahead. So going, going, going on to the next, into the next segment. The next segment, we're going to deal with some of the problems that plague our communities. And yeah, we addressed some of those things as we went to showing who, who we are and our identity. We're going to go through, it's, it's a letter called the Willie Lynch letter. If you don't have it, make, get a hold of it because it goes into the th some of the things that happened to us during slavery that still plague us today. Go to uh, page seven. The Willie page Lynch six. letter and the making and making of a slave. Page six. Yeah, read the highlighted part. In my bag here, I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee everyone, I guarantee every one of you that is installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. My method is simple. Any member of your family or your overseer can use it. So let's get real quick. Let's pause that real quick. Let's go to Psalm chapter 83 and 3. Let's see what this is. What happened to us? during slavery. What is this talking about? Because he said he has a foolproof, with the Willie Lynch letter, he said, I have a foolproof method for controlling your slaves. And then he said it's going to continue to control the slaves for at least 300 years. What was this? What was this that was going on at this time? Read. Psalm chapter 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So this is what we, this is what we call crafty counsel. This is a crafty counsel. This is a, a, a crafty plan to keep us in the conditions that we're in, to keep us dependent upon our oppressor, to keep us dependent upon those that took us captive. Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And they consulted against thy hidden ones. Though who are those hidden ones? Us, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Israelites. We are the hidden ones. These things happen to us. Now go back to the Woody Lynch. No, the, the next next page. Page seven. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves, and I take these differences and make them bigger. So he's, notice, notice he says he outlined uh, some differences amongst us, and then they make them diff, uh, bigger. They amplify the differences between us. What are some of those differences? I use fear, distrust, and envy for control purposes. So amongst those differences, they use fear, distrust, and envy. Fear, distrust, and envy for control 
purposes. And what happens, what, and when you look at, when you examine the, the crimes that go on in our neighborhoods, the murders, the shootings, the killings, all of it stem from fear, distrust. You distrust your neighbor, you distrust your brother. So you know what? I'm going to shoot him before he shoot me. You envious. Your brother got some, uh, he's sitting on 20s and you ain't got none. What you going to do? You going to go rob him. That was instilled in us in slavery. We didn't always think like that. We, 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 we had a point where we were one, we were single-minded. We were of one accord. We actually helped each other. But now we don't think to help each other. And that was instilled in us in slavery. Go to the next page. Page eight. Oh, uh, yeah, read this part. And so this is some of the, um, we, wait, before we go there, let's backtrack a little bit. Go to Psalms chapter 64 and 5. We go to the scriptures. Remember, what we're doing we're, show, we're showing the problems that's going on in our communities. Right now, we're showing some of the problems that go on in our community. And we're showing you that it's in the Bible. Because the Bible is the blueprint for the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. Read that. Psalms chapter 64, verse 5. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Mm -hmm. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? So this is what the nations have done amongst us since we've been in slavery. They lay snares amongst us privily. And some of these snares are right what we're about to go into. They separate, they got us separated from one another by the differences that's amongst us. And they use fear, distrust, and envy to do that. Do that. Read on. Read the next, the next verse six. Verse six. Verse six. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward parts, both the inward thought of every one of them, and the heart is deep. So this is what we're going into, this Willie Lynch letter. This is them searching out iniquities because using fear, distrust, and uh, envy, those are iniquities. The scriptures tell us that we shouldn't be envious. The, the scriptures tell us we shouldn't fear nothing but the Most High God and His commandments. But they use it where we fear we fear one another and that causes us to shoot each other down in the streets. This is, those, these are the tools that they use. And it says the inward thought of every one of them is in their heart is deep. They search deep to see how they can keep us divided so we don't come together as a nation. So we don't come to realize who we are. Let's go to uh, back to that Willie Lynch letter. See, well, let's see what some of those differences are amongst us. Page eight. On top of my list is age. Age. The, a lot of our, when you look at the streets today, our youth don't have no respect for the elders. They have no, they will, they will rob them. They'll take advantage of them. They'll go snatch their purse because they know that they are um, less able to defend themselves. That's evil, but that was instilled in us in slavery. Read, what else? But it is there only because it starts with an A. Uh -huh. The second is color. Color, you got dark, you, you, have, you have, I remember being in high school, growing up, and I'm, I'm, I'm darker, but the, a lot of times the, the lighter skin uh, Israelites amongst us what they did, they they have a little bit more favor, so to say. Like I'm dumb, dumb, dark. My mother is light, so we I can go in this place. My mother, my mom would be cool because she's lighter. But me, I get the uh, a heightened level of uh, discrimination, so to say. We both get discriminated against, but it's it's it's, it's good when you, the darker your complexion, you get it a little bit more. That's a difference, and they use that with each one with one another. We hate on each other because oh, you light, you think you you think you a pretty boy. We. It's a, it's a, it's a different. They, they set that difference and they make us. They use it against us. Now we, we hate our brother because he lighter than us. He hate our brother because he darker than us. Right. Read or shade. Uh -huh. There is intelligence. Intelligence. You like you got the the ones that's not as, uh, at, not as smart separated from the ones that's intelligent. So the ones that's intelligent, they may be going to school and things like that. Now, the one that's that that's not as smart, he envious of his brother because he's a little smarter. And he able to do. He able to make a little bit more moves. Which result in the murders. Read. Size. A size. Read. Sex. Uh-huh. Status. Sex. Now that's a, that's a heavy thing because the in the black and when you look at our communities, in most times the 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 men are divided. The women are divided from the men. The women are our women do do things to usurp authority over the man, to take take the position the things that men are supposed to be doing, the women are doing. And we're going to go a little bit deeper into that as we go through this, go through some of these pages. Read. 
Status on plantation. Uh -huh. Attitude of owners. Uh -huh. Whether the slaves live in the valley, on a hill, east, west, north, south, have fine hair, coarse hair, or is tall or short. So when you, know, when you listen to this, it says, go to the, the, way, the way it said, the status. Read status on plantation. Status on plantation. That's that's extremely heavy because when you when you forsake a time, I'm not gonna go through the scripture. When you look at the Bible, when you look in the book of Leviticus, we had laws set in place for those that was more uh prosperous, so to say. We had laws in place where we 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 had a care to take care of our brothers that was less uh fortunate. But now they use that and separate it's a difference. Those that's that's prosperous, they ain't doing nothing to bring bring the rest of the the uh, rest of our people out of the conditions. They may donate this to that, but they're not doing nothing tangibly. Because if they was doing something tangibly, it's a lot of our people that have became successful by whatever means. They they got a large amount of money. They became rapper or a, a basketball player. They put money into charities, but them charities don't really benefit, benefit us. Because if it did, we wouldn't still be in the hoods and in the slums. Mm -hmm. That's the fruit. That's how you see the fruit. The fruit is not there. Because we still in the slums, we still got the 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 uh the lowest um opportunities. So that lets you know that no, nah, you giving it to charities, they ain't going to us. They may build a a basketball arena or court, you go play basketball, but then you go back home, you still poor. That's a separate they use that to separate us. Oh, I got money, you don't. I no, nah, stay away from me. I don't have nothing to do with you. We had laws in place to to sustain one another. Read. Attitude of owners. Uh -huh. Whether the slaves live in the valley, on a hill, east, west, north, south, have fine hair or coarse hair. So go to real quick, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 10. Because they, they used all of these different things, the differences between us, to separate us and have us envious towards one another. Shoot rather, we would rather shoot our brother than help our brother to then, we would rather shoot our brother out of hatred rather than go to him and make amends and make peace and then work together to get out of the conditions that we in. We have fallen low. And that's what we that's our goal. That's our purpose of soul. Let's read that real quick. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind. And in the same judgment. So this is in the Bible. It says there should be no divisions amongst us. But when we were in slavery, our enemy used the differences in us to create divisions amongst us. And that carried on from slavery all the way up into today. Because we a lot of these things that we just read out of the Willie Lynch letter, when you examine our communities, when you that's what you got gangs, you got um you got the gangs, even when you look in the sports, everything that we do, we trying to be better than our brother. And we know we're not trying to we're trying to be better than our brother for, for status quo. We, we, we try to put our brother down and raise ourselves up because of differences. But the Bible tells us there should be no divisions among you, but that you should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Meaning that we understand, we see our brother struggle, we know what, hey, let's come up with a plan to come up out of this struggle together. If I, if I get, if I, if I, um, uh, if I get a good job, I land a good position, I start a good business, it's a good successful business, you know what? Hey, let's work together to get up out of here. And, and, and ultimately, the only way we're going to do that is when we return to the commandments. Because if we don't have the commandments, we're not going to be able to come together. Because you're going to have one brother want to have 20 women. Right. You have one brother that want to wanna, uh, steal and rob. No, we have to, that, us coming together as one, we have to be under the commandments. We gotta do under the we gotta be under the commandments. Um, so let's go here. Read, jump up, go up to page uh, ten. Go up to page ten. Dealing with one another, another one of the problems that's in our community. Read that. The Willie Lynch letter. Let's make a slave. Page ten. Let us make a slave. What do we need? First of all, we need a black nigger man a pregnant nigger woman and her baby nigger boy. Second, we will use the same basic principles that we use in the breaking of a horse, combined with some more sustaining factors. 
we reduce them from their natural state in nature, whereas nature provides them with the natural capacity to take care of their to take care of their needs and the needs of their offspring. We break that natural natural screen of independence from them and thereby create a dependency state so that we may we may be able to get from them useful production for our business and pleasure. So remember to call in 219-885-1371. You are listening to Prophesy Into the Wind Reloaded on WLTH 1370 Radio. So we're going to continue to go into that. So this so this is the break it says the breaking process of a slave. So go to, go over to 13. We want to deal with uh real quick cuz we running short on time on this segment, but we want to deal with something real quick that goes on that's prevalent in our community. Read that. Page 13. Keep the body and take the mind. Uh -huh. In other words, break the will to resist. Now, the breaking process is... Now, the, notice, it said break the will to resist. Uh -huh. I, when you do examine, the, even when our, our elders, a lot of our fathers that's older, they don't have the will to resist no more. We've seen it in the, well, during the Black Panther movement. We had a will to resist, but that was that been broken, and it was broken be, even before that. But during the Black Panther, we started to rise back up. But that will to resist was broken. We are we we, we what we called what it would be called a weak black man. That's what we see. It's sad to say, and it, it may hurt, but that's the truth. There's a lot of weak black men in our communities because we have we don't have no will to resist. But let's see why. Let's see what happened. Read now. The breaking process is the same for the horse and the nigger, only slightly varying in degrees. But as we said before, you must keep your eyes focused on the female and keep the offspring of the horse and the nigger. So notice it says you must keep your eyes on the female. You must keep your eyes on the female. Remember that, read. A brief discourse in offspring development will shed light on the key of sound economic principles. Pay Pay little attention to the general of uh, the generation of original breaking, but concentrate on future generations. What does the female generally do? She raise up the children. Mm -hmm. She take care of the children. She carry the child for nine, ten months. She give birth to them. She nurse them. She nurture them. She's doing the she's doing the bulk of the teaching at that young age. So they broke the read it again. Therefore, if you break the female, she will break the offspring in its early years of development. So this is that crafty counsel. This is that crafty counsel. So it says that you break the female because the female is going, when you break the female, the thing is you put, they, they put fear in the female. So it's like now, you know what? I got to I got to protect my children. I don't want them to grow up and die like they like they killing the dad, my the, my husband and things of that nature. So I gotta protect my children. So I'm gonna teach them to just submit to the master, mm -hmm. just submit so you don't die. And now what you got growing up, you got a, re, a reversal of the roles. The the men growing up weak minded and the women are growing up independent minded and masculine. they and masculine and they running the house, they running things. That's how you get your your big mom. Because now we're going to Big Ma for direction and not our grandfather, the, who's supposed to be giving a direction to the house. So we're approaching on the, the end of this first segment. We're going to take a quick break. Remember, jot down the number, 219-885-1371. And again, you are listening to Prophesy to the Wind Reloaded on WLTH Radio, 1370 AM. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed But at the end of the day Nothing's in vain IUIC Has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes Gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. 